In weeks three and six, the Pats relied on the run, which makes sense as the Lions and the Chiefs are among the league's softest rushing defenses. Brady won't have that luxury in week seven at Chicago. Yes, Frank Gore may have rushed for over 100 yards against the Bears in week six, but I expect Windy City's dominating D to stiffen after a head-scratching loss. With Gronk getting healthier, Julian Edelman back, and Josh Gordon playing more snaps, Brady figures to air it out at Soldier Field. I'm fearlessly forecasting 269 passing yards plus three touchdowns, though I do think he turns it over twice. Sony Michelle has made the leap. The rookie running back has emerged as a clear feature piece of the Patriots offense with carry totals of 25, 18, and 24 over the last three weeks. Michelle only has one catch in that span, so he doesn't have any sort of floor if the Patriots get thrown off script. But even though the Bears offense has looked strong over the last two weeks, I don't see them blowing out the Patriots or anything. When the New England backfield gets constricted to just one or two players, that's when we hammer the options every single week. We are in one of those scenarios right now with Michelle as the banger and James White as the clear receiver. I don't know how you'd possibly think about turning away from New England's red zone warrior and lead ball carrier now that this offense is firmly back on track. I'm fearlessly forecasting 19 carries for 81 yards and a score on the ground and one catch for four yards. Jordan Howard owners have logged in and they are very much mad online. Howard has totaled just 94 rushing yards over his last two games and he's been blanked in the pass game. That was all with his team posting their two best offensive outings with 76 combined points scored against the Bucks and Dolphins. Now I'm not gonna run out here and tell you to buy low on Jordan Howard, but I will say a high scoring home game against the Patriots should provide a decent script for him to get some volume. Howard is very difficult to trust right now, and his evaporation from the receiving tree does completely kill his floor. If you roll him out, you know what you're getting yourself into, but if the Bears' offense does keep clicking, Howard should at least have some chances at red zone work. I'm fearlessly forecasting 17 carries for 79 rushing yards and two catches for 18 receiving yards. James White continues to be money in the bank this year, regardless of what scoring format you play under. White is tied with Alvin Kamara and Saquon Barkley for the lead league among running backs in targets here in 2018. Even with Sony Michelle emerging as the featured runner in New England over the last three weeks, White still averaged 13 touches per game and scored three times. He's a key piece in this offense, and if you really want to fade a member of the currently highly concentrated New England backfield, that's a you thing, not a me thing. The Bears defense let Miami running backs get loose last week and Vegas expects this upcoming contest to approach the 50 point total mark. I'm fearlessly forecasting 10 carries for 44 rushing yards and 10 catches for 89 receiving yards and a score through the air. Correlation doesn't equal causation, you know, that's a rule, but with both of the Bears' clear best offensive outings coming in their last two games where Tariq Cohen was a featured piece, I'm at least starting to wonder if this unit isn't just better with Cohen getting the money touches over Jordan Howard. Cohen actually leads all running backs to have played three plus games this year with 18.2% of his snaps taken in the slot, and he's been targeted on 28% of his routes run this year. That actually gives him some similar receiving usage numbers to a player like Alvin Kamara. To me, Cohen is a must play here against the Patriots in week seven. This game opened up with a total around 50 points and I'm betting Cohen is one of the players to get in on that action. I'm fearlessly forecasting nine carries for 61 yards and eight catches for 73 yards and a receiving touchdown. How is Taylor Gabriel still available in a majority of Yahoo leagues? That is one of life's great mysteries, uh, at least in my world right now. He's coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He has seen at least five targets in every game so far this season. He's basically seeing an equal number of targets to Allen Robinson. Uh, if Robinson is the number one receiver in Chicago, then Taylor Gabriel is 1A. There's no reason he should not be owned. Uh, the matchup this week is with the New England Patriots, and that is a defense that's basically agnostic to yards against. Um, they'll give up a bunch of passing yards. Actually, so far this year, they've given up 15 passing scores as well. Uh, Gabe, Gabriel has been a bankable fantasy asset, and I think he has another good day. I'm going to give him five catches here, 88 yards, one touchdown. 
Allen Robinson now has touchdowns in back-to-back -back games. He had five catches for 64 yards and a score last week against Miami. Uh, the trouble so far is the targets have not been what we might have hoped for. He only has double-digit targets in one game so far this year, basically splitting them with uh, Taylor Gabriel pretty evenly. Um, the matchup this week, friendly. It's the Patriots. They've given up 15 passing scores. They give up about 270 passing yards per week. We expect the Bears to be in catch-up mode for most of the game. All of this sets up well for Robinson. I think he finds the end zone again. I'm going to give him five catches here, 59 yards and a score. Julian Edelman has been doing all the usual Julian Edelman things since returning from suspension. He's seen 16 targets over two games, has over 100 receiving yards. Made a house call uh, last week in that shootout against Kansas City. It's a matchup this week with a Chicago defense that obviously is very good on paper. They're the number eight pass defense. They have been allowing all kinds of yards after the catch to receivers. Albert Wilson absolutely ran wild against them last week. So that gives hope to Edelman owners. Uh, of course, he's going to catch his usual five or six passes in this one. He's got a chance to break loose and, and make another house call here. I'm going to give him officially six catches here. Let's call it 67 yards, and I think he finds the end zone again. Some people would say that Trey Burton hasn't lived up to the hype. I would vehemently disagree. He's actually TE8 in terms of fantasy points production. So he's turned a profit based on his August ADP, which is around TE10. Now you look at the matchup this week for the Chicago Bear. He gets the New England Patriots who allow the eighth most fantasy points to the tight end position, giving up four points over receptions, 54.8 yards per game, and four total touchdowns. Sure, the Pats are also allowing just 57.1 catch percentage to tight ends on the year, but Burton and those sneaky pitch plays, I think, finds the end zone. He goes for four receptions, 46 yards, and that TD. Touchdowns have been few and far between for Gronk this season, but tap the keg because he is going to party like it's 1999 this week against the Chicago Bears. Look, the Bears have a vulnerability, and that's defending the pass, particularly over the middle, as Chicago has allowed the 10th most fantasy points, four touchdowns, four receptions per game, and 45.4 yards per game to the tight end position. Yeah, they've only allowed a 58.8 catch percentage to plus size options overall, but Gronk, uh, who is TE6 in overall fantasy production among tight ends, goes for four catches, 63 yards, and finally finds the end zone again. 